2020 was weird, right? I mean, toilet tissue was flying off the shelves, we were locked in our homes, and it seemed like every newscast was playing the same tune. We have got you a roundup of the pandemic-related news from around the globe. Take a look. We're all gonna die! But in the spirit of social distancing, I decided to do something completely unheard of. I filmed an eight episode web series entirely by myself. No other actors, no camera crew, just me. Here's how I did it. I found myself needing to overcome five different obstacles. But the first one being, how do I make this thing unique? Now, I'm gonna say this, and, and don't fight me, because I know how you girls like to tussle, but natural hair care videos are boring. Yeah, I said it, but what that also means is so were mine. Which is why I wanted to step out of my comfort zone and do something completely different and unique. Now, I took as many tips and tricks as I could from these two books, and I'd like to think that my first series came out all right. I'm pretty proud of it. Needless to say, obstacle number one, done. Although, this obstacle was the least of my worries. Now, since we were in the middle of a panorama, I wasn't exactly comfortable having an entire crew inside my house. So, naturally, I had to figure out how to do everything by myself. My first step was finding the perfect camera for the occasion, although I just ended up making things 10 times harder on myself. I picked up the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, which so desperately needs a nickname, but really quickly, I do professional work outside of YouTube, so this cinema camera works perfectly for me, but it is complete overkill for YouTube. So if you wanna make things a little bit easier on yourself, just go ahead and pick up a camera with a front-facing LCD screen and something with great autofocus. Mine has neither. So how did I find a workaround for this? Let's move on to obstacle number two. So, no front-facing LCD screen, huh? So, how am I supposed to know what I'm shooting while I'm in front of the camera? Actually, pretty simple. I just use an external monitor. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Yes, I was fully dressed in the shower, shut up. I use the Feel World Field Monitor that requires just one battery and an HDMI cord. After that, it is good to go. The external monitor allows me to be able to see exactly what's in frame while I'm in front of the camera. And if you are interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, I will have everything listed down in the description. So without further ado, let's move on to obstacle number three. So as I was saying before, there's nobody here. So, so does that mean that that camera is going to be stuck in that same place the entire time? That's a little boring, right? No, 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 we don't do that here. Instead of just throwing my camera on sticks, AKA a tripod, I decided to invest in a single piece of equipment that completely changed the game. And I can do this without ever needing to touch my camera. I mean, tell me, which shot looks more interesting? This shot or this shot? To do this, I am currently using the Canova motorized slider. Not only does this slider move horizontally, but I can even mount it vertically and create these top to bottom shots. I can also set A and B points to lock down where I want the slider to start and to stop. I can set the timer to control how long it takes for the device to get to point A and to point B. Just set it and let the slider work its magic. This truly enables me to make my shots more interesting and dynamic. Needless to say, obstacle number three is no more. Obstacle number four is comprised of two of the most overlooked aspects when creating a YouTube video. Now they may not seem like they're big deals, but trust me when I say they are. Once I show you the difference these two make, oh, you will never be able to ignore them again. Audio and lighting make up obstacle number four. Now believe it or not, but your audio is actually more important than your picture quality. Now it is said that an audience will forgive you for bad picture quality as long as your audio is good. Take this for an example. Would you rather listen to something like this for two hours? Or listen to something that sounds like this for two hours? Yeah, you hear the difference now, don't you? 
Can't go back. I know. I'm sorry. It's no going back now. Usually professional sets will have what's called a boom operator. Now these are the people that you see holding those long poles that typically stand above the actor's head. Now a microphone is placed at the end of that to capture the actor's dialogue. But as we said, I'm in this alone. So what's the secret? I use what's called a lavalier mic, specifically the D80 V-Live microphone. Now I usually have it hidden like right here in my shirt so you can't see it, but it's facing my mouth so my voice sounds present and full. Now if you use this technique, just be sure to stick either skin tape between your skin and your shirt to avoid hearing rustling sounds as you move. Rustling sounds as you move. I didn't use the tape. I'm not dancing, I'm just rustling noises. I just run it into my iPhone and use this free voice recorder app as a recorder. Then I could just email the audio files to myself, sync it up in my editing program, and boom, I've got pretty decent audio. And just for the record, the irony of the fact that my audio is not the best is not lost on me. I have realized in the middle of the shoot that I need to upgrade my audio. It's kind of dying out on me, but oops. So now on to lighting. This can make or break your picture quality. So good lighting can make a cheap camera look like an expensive one, but bad lighting can make just about any camera look awful. And here's how you avoid that. Now, right now, as you can see, I'm standing up against a window, so I'm using natural light. But the thing about natural light, I love and hate it, it's wonderful, it's flattering on the face, but you can't control it. Like there's no controlling the sun, it does what it wants. So we have to use artificial lights. Now, <laughs> the lights that I use, I am due for an upgrade, but they work nonetheless. Let me show you. I use these hexagonal lights that are actually designed for photography, but I made them work for film. I've also added what's called a honeycomb grid, even though it doesn't quite fit, but again, I've made it work. This allows me to better direct the light, creating contrast on my face instead of a flatter look. It's always best to have what's called the shadow side closest to the camera, but that's if you're going for a more cinematic look. Now, as I'm sure all of you know, it is pivotal that you remain in focus during your videos. But since I don't have autofocus on this camera, how do I stay in focus? Well, I use my favorite piece of gear to date, a follow focus. I use the Tilta Nano follow focus to remotely control my camera's focus while simultaneously being in front of the camera. What? Let me, let me show you what I mean. The two-part device is connected with a remote that is wirelessly connected to another component that is attached directly to the camera's lens. So whenever I turn the remote, the gears on the attachment also turn, adjusting the focus. And just like the slider, you can set A and B points, only this time it's in terms of focus points. Now in this particular shot, Riley has the remote in her hand just out of frame. Point A was on her, while point B was on the phone. Pretty dope, right? If you don't wanna go the follow focus route and if you wanna save some money, you can always just use a mannequin or a stuffed animal or a pole and you can use that to set your focus and then stand in that exact same spot and boom, you're in focus. So comment down below and let me know which one of these products was your favorite. And if you haven't already seen my series, go ahead and check out season one. You will have a whole new experience now that you know all of my secrets. So just know season two is on its way as well. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired, stay empowered, and stay beautiful. Peace.